It is so important that we read. And this is what Texan local media is doing <coughs> for the entire month of, of August, which is of course also Women's Month. But we are here to encourage uh, you guys who are the, the next generation and the future to actually read. Um, you know, it's not just good enough to read social media or tweets. It's not just good enough, you know, to, to read a WhatsApp message. But you have to read books. Um, you know, it's fiction, it's non-fiction. You know, go to the library. It's amazing how many people do not even know where the library is anymore. Um, you know, we've got a huge library in Boxburg as well. You know, go to the library. You'll be amazed what you will find there. Um, you know, the world of books, um, there, is, there is so much, you know, that you can learn from books, you know. It is the knowledge that you will gain, the, the creativity, the imagination. Um, and this has been a passion with, with me for, for many years, is that I'm seeing that a, a lot of the young people, we don't read anymore. Um, and it is so important that you guys must read. The only way that South Africa can move forward is through an educated nation. And education begins with you. Now the amazing thing is that, you know, while you go to school and you get education here, the most important thing that you must remember is that education begins with you. Education really begins with you and it begins with how, how, how much do you want to educate yourself. And the only way you can educate yourself is through reading. There is no excuse. If you want to lead a great life and you want to make a success out of life, and you want to fulfill all your dreams, then read. That is, that is the key. Nelson Mandela, he was, he was great on education because that is the future. That is the key to your success. So I want to encourage you all today that you need to go out there and you need to start reading. While you get you know, your textbooks here and you get your assignments to read, but outside of these premises, go and read. Find books, find books, not just magazines, but go and find books. Go to your library. If you don't know where the library is, then on someone. <laughs> but go and find the library. And today, you know, I just thought you know, it's a very good idea um, just, just allow me about four or five minutes. I just want to read for you something. Um, it is when I grew up, um, you know, I, I used to leave, uh, read a lot, you know, a lot of fantasy books as well. And, you know, the, 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 the one book that I really loved was the book, it was called The Hobbit. Um, pretty short little book, you know, they, they made a movie out of this book, which is about three hours long. But the book is only about 60 pages long. Um, you know, these are books that you can go and read. And it's your imagination, it's your creativity. And I just want to read for you a bit out of the first chapter. Um, and, you know, just sort of, as I read it, you can just imagine the world that, that the author is trying to create. And the reason why I want to read from the first chapter is very simple. Because this is regarded as one of the greatest chapters that was ever written in a book. A lot of people know how the Hobbit goes and how the first chapter goes. I just want to read this for you. Um, and then by it, just hope to encourage you to really cultivate a love for reading and a love to educate yourself. The book begins with an unexpected party and says the following. In a hole in the ground there lived a hobbit, not a nasty, dirty, wet hole, filled with the ends of worms and oozy smell, nor, not, nor yet a dry, bare, sandy hole with nothing in it to sit down on or to eat. It was a hobbit hole, and that means comfort. It had a perfectly round door like a porthole, painted green with a shiny yellow brass knob in the exact middle. And the door opened onto a tube-shaped hole like a tunnel. A very comfortable tunnel without smoke, with paneled walls and floors tiled and carpeted, provided with polished chairs, 
and lots and lots of pigs for hats and coats. The Hobbit was fond of visitors, and the tunnel wound round on and on, going fairly, but not quite straight, into the side of the hill. The hill, as all the people for many miles round called it, and many little round doors opened out of it, first on one side, and then on another. Not going upstairs for the Hobbit, bedrooms, bathrooms, cellars, pantries, wardrobes, kitchens, dining rooms, all were on the same floor and indeed on the same passage. The best rooms were all on the left hand side, for these were the only ones to have windows. Deep set round windows looking out over the garden and meadows beyond sloping down to the river. Now this Hobbit was a very well dude to do Hobbit and his name was Baggins. He had lived in the neighborhood of the hill for time out of mind and people considered them very respectful not only because of most of them were rich, but also because they never had any adventures or did anything unexpected. You could tell what a Baggins would say on any question without the bother of asking him. And this is a story of how a Baggins had an adventure and found himself doing and saying things altogether unexpected. He may have lost the neighbor's respect, but he gained well you will see whether he gave anything in the end. The mother of all of our particular hobbit, what is a hobbit? I suppose hobbits need some description nowadays, <coughs> since they have become rare and shy of the big people, as they call us. They are the little people about half our height and smaller than the bearded dwarves. And hobbits have no beards. There is little or no magic about them except the ordinary everyday sort which helps them disappear quietly and quickly <laughs> when large stupid folk like human come and we come blundering along making a noise like elephants which they can hear a mile off they are inclined to be a fat in the stomach and they dress in bright colors they wear no shoes because their feet grow naturally leather soles and thick warm brown hair like the stuff on their heads and they have long, clever brown fingers, good-natured faces, and they da laugh deep, fruity laughs after dinner. And by some curious chance, one morning long ago in the quiet of the world, when there was less noise and more green, and the hobbits were still <coughs> numerous and prosperous, and Bulba Baggins was standing at the door after breakfast smoking an enormous long wooden pipe that reached nearly down to his woolly toes. Gandalf came by. If you had only heard a quarter of what I have heard about him, and I, have, and I have only heard very little of all there is to hear, you would be prepared for any sort of remarkable tale. Tales and adventures sprouted up all over the place, wherever he went, in the most extraordinary <coughs> fashion. <coughs> Good morning, said Bulbo, <coughs> and he meant it. And the sun was shining and the grass was very green, but Gandalf looked at him from under long bushy eyebrows that stuck out further than the brim of his shady hat. And what do you mean, he said, do you wish me a good morning, or mean that it is a good morning, whether I want it or not, or that you feel good this morning, or that it is a morning to be good on? All of them at once, said Bulbo, in a very fine morning for a pipe of tobacco out of doors into the bargain. And this is how the story then continues of Bulbo and Gandalf. And it's an incredible adventure of these two that they go on. The hobbit that never wanted to go on an adventure, <coughs> he just was comfortable. And the whole story is really about how each and every one of us can achieve great things, even though we don't always think that we can achieve great things. And this is the power of education, that you can all achieve great things in your life. But it begins with you. It begins by reading. It begins by educating yourself. And then you can achieve great things. You can go on great adventures. And you can be the success that you always want to be. So my message today is very simple. Go out there, read. Read, read, read. Find anything that you can read. Just go out and read and enjoy it. 
You'll be amazed what you will find and what you will learn. <coughs> and that will all help you in your journey. And you will find that life isn't a great adventure. You know, books, it was probably my greatest companion when I grew up. And it can be your greatest companion as well. I know a lot of people saying, but you know, books are boring. You'll be amazed it is not. There is so much to learn. There is so much to enjoy. So that's my, my message, what I want to encourage you with today. Read and keep on reading. The more you read, okay, the more you read, the more you prepare yourself to enter into the real world. So take the message to heart. And I hope that you act on it. You act on it and you prepare yourself for a possible future that can be bright depending on the choices you are making for yourself. Okay?